Hello, I'm Leslie Morrissey, and I'm going to show you how to optimize your LinkedIn profile. Hopefully this will make it more attractive to potential clients and you'll be able to make the right contacts to make your LinkedIn account work for you. I've been on LinkedIn since about 2005 and I guess I'm what you call an early adopter. And I've seen it change a lot over the years as well. I still use a free account and there's no reason why you shouldn't. My take on that is that you need to make the free account work to its fullest before you start paying for one that has more features. And very few people actually use all the features that are available on the free account. So let's get started and look at how you can optimize your profile. The first thing to look at is your professional headline. Um, a headline like any other headline is there to capture attention. And you'll find that this is on underneath your name. You can see it on the, the screenshot there. Mine does not have my job title. And I think putting your job title there is not helpful. Instead, I've got something that I hope will connect with the kind of people I want to do business with. So mine has helping time for entrepreneurs to communicate with impact and two of my core um, key skills. So it's worth looking at that. And let's have a look at how you can optimize that. First, you use eye hooks and eye hooks are those little stars and diamonds. I use them to attract attention because we're all very quick to sort of flick our way down screens. People have got the attention of a gnat these days. Um, and so having something that stops the eye and pulls the eye in is useful. And that's why they're there. They're not there because somebody um, just wants to look like, you know, a star. <laughs> they're there to help other people to actually read what you have to say. Now, in order to write this, you need to know who your ideal client is. And we'll look at that in just a moment. But basically, it needs to be targeted at the kind of people that you really want to work with and tell them why they should be looking at what you've got to offer. So mine is for time poor entrepreneurs and I help them with communication um, and making a, a splash with it, making people take notice of what they have to say. Putting your key skills in is useful as well because that helps them to understand a little bit about what it is you do. You have 120 characters. Use them wisely. And fine, that's including spaces. So <laughs> if you're putting these little stars in, you have to count them as well. So let's have a look at the ideal client profile. People will tell me many times that, you know, I say, who do you want to be referred to? And they say, anybody who wants what I do. I wouldn't recognize that kind of person if I fell over them. So I'm looking for more specifics. Um, in, in the treasure chest on my website, there is a, a, a worksheet for this. So if you want to go and look at that, you can do that. And the contact details will be up on the screen later on. But ideally, what you're looking for is the kind of client who absolutely loves what you do, that thinks you're the best thing since sliced bread and who you really enjoy working with. And you've probably had at least one in the past that fulfills those criteria. So describe them because that's who you're looking for. Yes, of course you can help other people and you can have other client avatars, but ideally you want the ones that you like the most, the ones that you really get a lot out of working for, the people that actually value what you have to offer and are willing to pay for it and because they think you're great. And that's what you're looking for. In order to write something that hits them, you need to know what their problems are, what's causing them pain, what's keeping them awake at night, and then be specific about what you can help them with. So that's the, 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 the headline. That's the first thing to get right. Um, the second thing is your image. Now, I have taken all of these off LinkedIn at various times and if you look at them, they really are not typical LinkedIn profiles. The first one is a, I haven't got a picture. P 
people are always a little suspicious. If you won't put a picture up, they go, what are you hiding from? Um, your company logo doesn't go on your headshot. It goes elsewhere in your profile, which we'll talk about later if necessary. But um, there, there are some terms and conditions attached to LinkedIn. And it does say something along the lines of it must be a recognizable image of the account holder, which clearly your product, your premises, pictures and other such things um, are not. It should be a professional headshot. So A, you should treat it in the same way as you would if you were going to a live networking event. People want to look you in the eyes. Um, and there's a difference between looking you in the eyes and, and doing that sort of sultry thing. There's a couple of inappropriate ladies there who this is great for Facebook, maybe, or for a photo shoot thing, not for LinkedIn. You shouldn't look as though you've had a few drinks and you're at a party somewhere. You should look business like and you should just have head and shoulders because when that avatar is shrunk down to the little tiny size, it appears in various places. You can't recognize who it is. And the whole idea is this is the point at which they make eye contact with you. So you're aiming for friendly and approachable. So not booted, suited and forbidding like the chap on the left. Oh, he's not too bad, but he's not very smiley. The chap on the right is the more the kind of thing you want to look at. You don't have to wear a tie if you're a guy. Um, you wear what you would normally wear to meet somebody for business purposes. So, yeah, if you're a sports coach, then you probably wear a polo top. Um, but just think in terms of this is the point at which you make eye contact with someone and they go, he looks like somebody I want to talk to. Or she looks someone who who's professional and knows what they look talking about. So that is what you're aiming for. It's worth paying to get your headshot done um, because you'll get a better result and you'll be happier with it as well than yards of selfies. Your contact details. Now, this is obvious. Everybody says, oh, yeah, of course, you've got to put all what you there are some things that people do not do that they ought to do. One is they put a, a, a email account that's AOL or it's Hotmail or it's Gmail. You should use a professional email account, especially if it's your business, because why advertise one of the standard email things? You you should be advertising your business. So people should be realizing you're serious, you're a professional. And that's what that says about you is if you've if you've got an, an email address that's at Hotmail or at Gmail, it says you can't be bothered. And that's not it's, it's not a, a message that's sort of up front, but it's a subliminal message. And people get that subconsciously. And that isn't the message you want to, to give them. OK, the other things that are useful for you as well is to look at the websites. Now, you've got an opportunity to put in three web addresses and most people use the company website. But actually, if you choose when you go in to edit your web address, if you choose other, it pops out this box that's in the ring there, which you can type things in. So if you think about it, rather than it just saying your website address and then in brackets, company, it should it says your website address and what you want to say, which could be three pages on your current site, on the same site, but go to different areas of the site. So one could go to your homepage, one could go to your services page or to two different services page. You could even have one go to your about page if you want to or your blog page. So people read that and it's more enticing than just company. Who, who goes and clicks on a company website? Hardly anybody. So we're, we're looking at putting that little seed there that says to people, oh, that looks interesting. Shall we just click on that? So that's what you're aiming for. The next thing you've got to think about is your about page, your about section. It used to be called a summary. Now it's called about. And, and it should be written in the first person, not in the third person, because otherwise it sounds a bit pompous and it sounds like somebody else has written it. And even if they have, it shouldn't sound like that. 
Um, it, it should market your services and products. If, if you're a business owner, the whole point of this is to attract potential clients and present the benefits of what you do. Clearly, if you're not the business owner, it depends on on what your role is in your current employment and if it's business development then you probably also follow this otherwise it's probably promotional about your skills and how you've uh, achieved things but it needs to be something that people will find interesting and you only have to think in terms of what you find interesting and what you just don't want to read so you don't open it up with thank you for visiting my web my account Nobody notices if you don't. So um, I, I would say start with something that, again, draws the eye. And the reason I say that is because you'll only get a couple of lines showing. If you look at, at that, there's the first line and the second line. Then there's see more. So you have to click on the see more to read the rest. Now, my take on it is you use a headline at the top. You use your eye hooks. You don't have formatting in this currently, so you can't make the font bold, you can't make it italic, you can't change the size or the type of font it is. You are stuck with what you've got. So I'm not a big fan of capital letters, um, but I do use them in LinkedIn just for the headlines. So I use capital letters clearly for ordinary things, but I don't use them for headlines. It should always be in sentence case because the eye reads it more easily. So you need to have something that will draw the eye and those little eye hook things which you can copy and paste in are the best way of, of at least getting started. Once you open it up and you look at the rest of it, if you look at mine, I've used mine as an example because I do walk the talk, you'll see there's more than one heading. And what, what I've d done deliberately there is if the first bit people read and they don't engage with it a subheading will pull them back in it re-engages them so they will read the next bit and it's, it's the same with anything else it's like reading a newspaper because if you think about it when you read a newspaper you don't read it from cover to cover you look at the headlines and you decide whether the headline tells you enough to, is that going to be something I'm interested in? And that's exactly what you're using here. The same with your professional headline at the top. It needs to be something that says to the reader, you need to read some more. And again, the more sort of subheadlines you've, I'm not saying you should pepper it with them. You've got about 2000 characters. So I would say stick with that. Um, you try don't try and reach it it's not a a target but you you've got that quite a lot to get in there so put the odd headline in to re-engage people as you as you go through do f tell people what you want them to do at the end of either the whole lot or at each section if you want them to you want to you can put you know visit this page on my website go and read my blog see this video follow your company page like our company page on on linkedin but always make it easy for people to take action so if you say to them do this if you say for instance email me you put your email in where it says email me don't expect them to go back up to the top find your contact details look in view people are lazy generally and they're time poor none of us have the time to valve around we just want to get a result and we want to get it quickly the other thing that will help people to see all of these things is to put in the white space as i said LinkedIn does not have um, formatting in your profile area in the where it says about. So you have to put spaces in. It isn't like a Word document where it automatically puts in a space between paragraphs. You will have to physically put those in. Another hint while I'm thinking about it is do type your summary, your about section in a Word document or a text document of some kind and save it there I, I used to work for a uh, online 
networking company called Academy some years ago and I was their customer support uh, manager and at weekends we used to get people who'd spent Saturday afternoon rewriting their summary and they got distracted by something I don't know maybe the football or or the kids had come in or something like that and they'd forgotten to save it and of course if they didn't save it the, the platform didn't keep it it just disappeared so we used to get these these um help things come into customer support saying i just rewrote my my summary and and my profile and it's all gone and i don't know what to do can you get it back and our webmaster used to say well unless they've saved it no we can't because if they didn't save it effectively it doesn't exist so always save it on a word document and then copy and paste it in but remember when you do that on linkedin you're going to have to manually put your line spaces in between your paragraphs if it's a big wadge of text it just looks really hard to read and most of us are our subconscious looks at a big chunk of text and goes oh that looks difficult i'll read it later and of course as you know later never comes so that that's my advice on this um and you can tell people to go wherever you want them to go or to do whatever you want the other thing you can do, of course, is to add value. So that means you can upload something. You can see I've got something on my profile that says, have you got a business card? Um, you, a how to, uh, 17 tips for this, uh, three things or three mistakes to avoid your whatever it is your specialism is checklist. So your health and safety checklist or your technology technist or whatever it is that you do. And those are things that attract the eye attention. So it's something you can upload onto your profile to add value that gives people, it's effectively a report or a white paper or something that people will find, oh, this and also demonstrates how good you are at what you do as well. It's a, a clever way to educate the reader. If they decide they're going to download it, it means that they will learn something and about whatever you're writing about, but also learn about you and what you know about your subject matter. So that's always a good thing to do. And you can keep adding value. You can add more more things. You can put them. Um, you can put these kind of things on your profile, both on the about section and also attached to your um, experience. It's your current experience. So you can put things that are about what your business is as well. And they can be um, MP4, so little video, short video files. They can be images, JPEGs, P PINGs, TIFFs, PDF files, open office, um, PowerPoints, Word documents, all of those. You can upload GIFs, but they don't um, they don't run. They they just show you the the opening slide so you have to think about that um it's probably better to just use an mp4 if you've got a bit of video and it doesn't have to be long you know it can be 30 seconds if it makes the point i know of um certainly speakers and people who are trainers often have little show reels of them doing what it is they do best engaging with the trainees or the audience it it demonstrates what they do uh, but i'm sure that there are other ways of using video i mean video is so popular now and you can attach short videos to your profile but also keep adding value by putting in updates that come up on the home page um, put in articles on your profile because that again is things that you can educate people with and if you write regularly, then your contacts will be told that you've put an article up there and they'll see it on the front page, on the home page. So there's a lot of things you can do to keep adding value. So this is just your launch pad. I mean, there's there's a whole lot more. We haven't even talked about the company page. We haven't talked about relationship management. We haven't talked about search strategies or your PR strategy. And believe me, there are a lot of journalists and editors on LinkedIn. So it's a great place to make contact with them. The, but just having your profile so that it's nice and shiny and it looks good and it makes a good impression and it captures attention is the place you start from. If your profile's not good or there's no content in it, whatever else you do is going to be affected by that. So it's a, 
a fantastic place to start. It's polish your profile up. Everything else gets easier after that. OK, um, that's pretty much what I'm going to say about optimising your profile. I've got a couple of other things to run through before we finish. One is just an overview of what we can do if you are looking for somebody who can help you. We do profile writing. So if you're struggling with your profile, we will do that for you. We have a conversation either on Skype or on the telephone and decide what you want. And then we draft it and it goes backwards and forwards till you're happy with it. We write website content that's reader focused. We do blogs for people. We do newsletters. We help people with reputation marketing and setting up a system that works for them. We write articles for either publication or to put on your profile on LinkedIn or to users blogs. We can create lead magnets. Those are free documents that people will download in order to build your list because they give you their email to do that. We have social media advice and we do management. We've got a, a Facebook wizard in the team as well as myself. We've got a social media data in administrator who helps people getting it all set up. And we do to we do PR as well. So um, all of those things are things that we can help you with. I have an offer for you, though, and it's something that you might be interested in just to get started in the reputation management scheme. It is only for people who are on this summit. So it doesn't appear anywhere else. It is um, what, what we're offering is we have a video program that has nine 15 minute video tutorials, including some of what you've already had. But then there's another about seven that cover other things on LinkedIn. Some of the things that we don't have time to do here. And you get notes and assignments that will take you through all the steps. So you're using LinkedIn to its fullest. That's £47 normally. Um, we can write you a LinkedIn profile head and a headline and the about section. Normally we charge you £144 for that. This is all these prices include VAT. Um, we can produce 30 updates for LinkedIn that you can use and reuse that can be scheduled in to um promote your business in the form of tips and hints and useful, helpful advice. And we'll use your business website or and a discussion with you to do that. Again, that's worth £108. And we will also write you two, three to 500 word articles for your LinkedIn profile or and your blog. You can use it in both places. Again, the value of that is 216. Now, my, I had to get the calculator out because my maths is terrible, but it works out at 515 UK pounds and whatever the equivalent is in other um, currencies. We're offering that for just £350 at the moment. If you're interested, then please contact me um, and you will, as I say, you've got £515 worth of value for £350. This is a one-off. It is a very special rate. It's only for people who are on this programme. So please write down my email, leslie at insidenews.co.uk. Put in the summit subject line, summit offer, and make sure you send me your name, your email and your web address. And I will get back to you and let you know how to claim it and what we have to do to go through it and organise the payment and all of the rest of it. So if that's something you're interested in, get in touch. I'd really be happy to hear from you. But meanwhile, don't forget... Go back, take a look at your profile, start at the top and make sure that all the boxes are ticked so that when people land on their, your profile, they really get what you're offering and who you are. I hope you're enjoying the conference. Talk to you again soon, I hope.